G'day, g'day, g'day. Let's see if I can get this set up properly today. Got a little bit of a drive, uh, and the footage you're about to see, tagged onto the end of this, is how to mow a lawn with a whipper snipper. I was talking to my mate over the weekend and he was uh, gobsmacked at the quality um, that was able to be achieved just with the whip snipper alone. And I've actually had a few clients comment on it recently and I thought, well, that's a good uh, video topic. So we're going to discuss that and how to do it. Um, there's a little bit of go now, so I'm trying to remember exactly the steps that I wanted to explain. But the main thing is keep your revs right up on your whipper snipper. Don't try and... Um, Pussyfoot around is the way to say it. It's uh, uh, not the best term, but that's sort of, it's what it is. You just don't muck around with it. And that's M-U-C-K. Some people mispronounce or mishear what I say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so no stuffing around at all with the revs. Just get it up there. Be mindful of where you're flinging your debris. Because if you pick up a rock in amongst the grass, it's gonna it's gonna shoot pretty far um, being at full revs and your cord is gonna be slightly longer than normal that's another tip because you can cover a wider um, your swarf just it covers such a, a bigger larger area um, when you got your line a little bit longer so that's um, the nuts and bolts of it another thing is obviously control not to dig in follow the contours of the land but also Act as if you are. Sorry if you can hear that too. So, I'm uh, on my way out to a new property, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going on this one. And uh, yeah, you just want to carry it through as if it was the mower um, cutting it, and that way you know or your deck's so so wide. That means that you need to cover it with your whipper snipper and just come through. If it means not dipping down to follow the contours exactly, then that's what you got to do to create a uniform finish. Um, and it's quite easily done and it's very handy to know because if you're ever unable to get a mower down there which I was today it's a steep driveway it was wet um, a lot of reasons why you don't want to mow sometimes uh, and it's just hard to get the mower in there simple as that you, you want to um, be able to have this skill up your sleeve to then be able to do that you don't miss out on doing that lawn um, and you give a great finish Sometimes it works out quicker. I've got a couple of properties now where I've got the larger zero turn out the front But it's got like small courtyards out the backyard And I just jump from one to the next with the snipper because by the time I get back out the front to get the little push mower I'm already done the snippering so The final thing I'll make mention of is blow it all down at the end uh, Usually when you're mowing and even when you're mulching you don't have to blow the top of the grass off unless you're taking a fair bit off in which case you do on main areas and other bits where it's left, it, it'll be fine, 100% fine. And with the whip snipper, however, you're taking a little bit more off. The cut isn't quite as clean as a um, mower would be. Obviously a cord versus uh, a blade, but if you're using uh, a squared cut line or what I use is a hexagonal line, I find they give a razor cut, especially at full revs. It's when you slow down and it, it it wraps the grass around itself. It doesn't um, doesn't like doing that. So, yeah. Without further ado, we'll shoot on to the footage now, and uh, I'll be back in a moment, and then we'll add that to the end for the final word on what's happening today and what happened, all the exciting things. All right, whoosh.
Whoosh, whoosh. All right, I'm back. Um, what happened today was, <coughs> after doing all these lawns, I've got hedging works out here to do for this new client. Um, I'll at least get that done, depending if the lawn is too wet to get on. Um, I'll get on that probably Thursday or Friday. So with this um, leading into winter business and how to, how to go around it, my diary's pretty much stocked up um, all through winter. It's just, it depends on how profitable you want to be is to how far you want to push it. Like, I was home about 12.30 yesterday. It was still around the 5.50 mark I made for, for that period of time. Um, and being a public holiday yesterday, I don't like to work too hard on the public holidays because I take my holidays when everyone else is at work. That's just how I've worked the business. Um, unless it's a sort of Christmas day type scenario and things like that, then I make a point of not, not working them days, obviously, in Christmas Eve. That's an inside... Uh, Inside joke, if you know what I'm saying about Christmas Eve. It's, uh, <laughs> I'll almost let you know. First house, uh, I put a tomahawk into my knee. Uh, it was Christmas Eve. I was using power tools, using all this other stuff. So we just got a rule, and there's no work to be done on Christmas Eve from now on. <laughs> That's the main reason why. Uh, you didn't really need to know that, but now you do. So, yeah, with these other jobs, I've got painting work, stick restorations, all the rest. And a lot of my clients have been really helpful and it's very unexpected because I'm already booked into winter and like July, August and then come September it's it's guns blazing, it, it's going hard again and probably harder than we've ever gone before to be honest but I'm going to push it to a limit that I've never gone to on my own so that's where the extra pair of hands will be coming in um, and even when I did have extra pair of hands before we've never pushed it to the extent of 20 plus lawns a day and things like that and the reason for that was we never had the ride on so enough getting off topic off topic with the um, painting jobs and everything else all the clients have come through uh, and spoken to me and said oh how busy do you want to be or what, what do you want like um, how much work would you like us to give you top and that, that's massive that's huge for a client to be able to do that and say that it's um, again very humbling very very courteous of everyone to know that things are going to be slowing down the business might hurt, be hurting or and luckily for me I, i've had plenty of clientele and i i sort of book out months in advance a lot of people i follow a lot of people i talk to are sort of weeks at the most in advance and i just prefer to be months booked out if anything was to go wrong and something like this big depth of restoration job we've had to add things to it so it can quote no longer suits i've got all these other works that i can draw on and feel that it's never like oh no we've, we've, we've lost a big job there like how are we going to feel it what we're we going to do on that way so, like it's straight away there's always some plan or something to do i hold it down if we're doing any work out here it's bucketing here again bucketing